Hey everybody, so we're getting really close to a fun milestone where we're actually gonna have a cabinet with a pinball play field with flippers that flip. And at that point, we can really start to have fun prototyping and trying out different shots and ideas. For me, that's the most fun part, so we're almost there. But the first thing we need for all that, right, we gotta have power. So today we're gonna to talk about getting power added to our cabinet, talking about power supply, talking about power node boards, the pinball controller set. Um, might not sound that, that exciting, but it's like this, it's like the core, the guts of your pinball machine, right? We got to go through and do it. You get into it, it's actually not too hard. It's actually kind of fun, I think. Um, yeah, so we're going to run through all of that. Um, before we dive in, I just want to give a big thank you to everybody who's been, been subscribing and been following along. It's been really humbling. Thank you so much for all the kind comments. Got over 100 subscribers now, almost 150. So thank you. Keep up sharing the news. I'm sure there's other people out there um, might find this interesting or hopefully it'll be helpful if they're building their own machine. So... Okay, and I want to stay true to that. Like seriously, like there's, I want to make sure that we're giving you everything you need to be able to build your own. So if I'm skipping something or you're not sure, let me know. Call it out in the comments down below, and I'll come back around. I'll address it in another video, or I'll just answer you in the comments. We've got a lot of fun resources and links and things in today's description video. We're going through a lot of stuff as far as where we're getting power supplies, where we're getting these no boards from, um, the the mechs we're going to have for the pinball machine itself, the flippers, all that type of stuff. I've got an online tutorial, a Google Doc, where I've written down a verbatim with schematics and images of exactly how wires need to be pinned and where they go. So I'm just going to kind of walk through the overview of what I did, but then definitely jump into that Google Doc and you'll be able to see exactly step by step what I did, okay? Um, we're also going to find out how much I've been spending on this thing so far. It's not the cheapest project in the world, as you probably know. It adds up quick, but I've got a spreadsheet where I'm tracking down every piece that I've bought so far. I've already got a list of other things I know I need to buy, and of course I add to it as I discover new things that we need to buy to complete it also. So that's there. Everybody can view and, and see how expensive this project gets by the time we get done. Um, yeah, okay. Um, aside from that, like, let's just dump, jump right into it. So, power. Okay. First thing first. <laughs> Gotta have the power cord. Um, no, really. This is a simple thing, but that's kind of where it all starts, right? We're gonna start from the very beginning, from the source. So, um, I got this at Home Depot. It's just like, uh, I believe, an 18 or 16 gauge um, extension cord. Um, three prong, obviously, to get a good ground. That's important with the ball machine, with the high voltage we're doing. I'll look up at the 16 or 18, but um, anyways, we went through and I cut off the end and then I cut back the sheath about three feet. You'll be able to see that inside here. So the cord comes inside this little recessed um, holder here. And these are hard to find nowadays. I found one on eBay for 15 bucks. It can be kind of tricky, but um, you don't have to use this setup though. You can also use another approach to get your cord to come in here with like a little quick, quick connect that has the right connections. Just like a computer cord plugs in and you can pull it out. There's lots of options to do that. But all right, so you get a power cord coming in, even just as simple as just drilling a hole through the cabinet, right? And sticking it through, however you want to do it. I've got this anchored down here with a couple of um, a couple of screw down anchors so it can get yanked on, it won't get yanked out and hurt the cord. From there, the sheath is cut and I've got the bare wires going throughout the cabinet, all right? And the first important thing we're gonna talk about is your ground, your green wire here, right? Usually you're gonna have your green, white, and so black. The green wire is coming out here is your ground. That's gotta come in directly to your power supply. And we've got two power supplies here for pinball machine. We've got a high voltage, 48 volt, power supply, and then we've got a lower voltage switching power supply that gives us both 12 and 5 volt voltage as we need for different areas of the play field, okay? So you're going to run the ground from your power cord coming straight in from your wall. The ground's going to come straight to your first power supply, to the high voltage one, and then down below we've got another one kind of daisy chain coming across over to the low voltage power supply. So those are both effectively and immediately grounded. That is vital. You must do that, okay? From there, You'll notice we've got a couple of strands of cords here going down. We've got the white and the black from the main power line coming down all the way through the cabinet. And they're going to come down into an 8 amp slow blow fuse holder. All right. And there's different types of fuse holders. This one I like. Um, it's got a simple little thing to help you pull the fuse in and out. It just kind of twists out of position. Being hard right now, being stiff. I'm doing it backwards. It twists out of position. Okay. And then, if you can see that closely, and then you get your fuse in there, and then you just twist it back into place. It's nice and tight. And then it goes down inside this little terminal block. I like this one because it's got screws for the terminals, nice and secure. And you can just snap your fuse right in there. Now the black line, if you notice, there's a black line that's coming into this fuse holder. That's your load. And then it comes out of that into this simple switch. And then from that switch, it continues um, on into the cabinet. Okay, it's gonna continue on to our high voltage power supply. Okay, the white line just comes in straight to the switch on one side, back out on the other side, and they all continue back to the power supply. 
here's a close-up of that switch real fast. So the switch, like you'll see in many things, right? Just a simple little rocker switch, power switch on off, right? This one's nice. I got off Amazon, links down below. It's got a light. So when it's wired up correctly, you turn it on, it lights up so you know you did it right. Um, but pretty basic, just four poles here, okay? And you can mount the power switch wherever you want. I've got this, the cabinet I borrowed, the hole was already in the front, so I've got mine there. Lots of the newer ones, they're in the back, in the back box, wherever you want to do it. And then we've got this blue um, electrical cover, okay? Got it from Home Depot also. Cut out below the circle so the wires can go through easily. And this is just going to come through and set on top, all right? Keep everything covered so nobody gets hurt by electrical <laughs> being exposed. All right. Now, long term, what we're going to want to end up doing, instead of just having these wires kind of be exposed through the cabinet, when we get to a final build, I'm going to run just a, a small diameter PVC conduit pipe through there to cover it. And then we've got the power supplies, and we've got our power boards back here, and our first nano controller board. These are pretty far back in the cabinet. We're still going to go through and have a little protector that's going to come down over the top of them there to make sure that no screws or washers fall down and short anything out, and again, just keep things safe. We'll make sure it's properly ventilated. All right, so looking in here a little bit more closely what we have. So again, we've got our power cords running up from, this, from the power switch, our ground going straight in, and then these are the return power lines from the switch coming into this power supply. And then from that power supply underneath, you'll notice there's three more of the same wires continuing over to the small power supply, okay, to get them both having power. And then we've got, on the high power supply, we've got four more wires, okay? And they are gonna come into this set here. And again, I've got a, a Google Doc that's going to show this. Let me, I should have probably had this pulled out ahead of time for you. Okay. But this has a collection of the high power voltage coming from the high power supply and also lines for 5 and 12 volt coming from the small power supply. And they all are coming here into this connector. Okay. And this connector goes to our power driver board over here. Okay. And then from the power driver board, We've got, get that back in, we've got another connector here that's running power from the power driver board, some of it over here to the nano driver board, which is the board that communicates to your computer, then has these ethernet ports, and then communicates out to each of the, of the subsequent node boards in the loop network of these boards that actually get to then, you know, control things on the play field, okay? We've also got a few lines of power that it is running directly out and into the cabinet. I've got them on this little quick connect here, right, where I can easily connect and disconnect from my play field. So I just got basic stuff set up right now, just flippers and slingshots and that's it. A couple wires that are running to the front of my cabinet for my flipper switches so that all this can then be activated and communicated with the other boards, okay? Again, basic stuff, not a lot here going on. Um, and yeah, refer again to my um, to my tutorial to know exactly which wires go where and why and how to, um, how to do the pins, okay? But at the end of the day here, so we've gone from power supplies and now to this, our power driver board and this nano controller board, the software controller board. Now there we've got the two primary boards for our pinball controller board hardware set, right? The power driver board and the nano board, which is the one that you know, communicates with the software and gets things running. The power driver board, it's small, right? Um, it's a smaller board, right? It's got a fuse bank, it's got these capacitors, and that's about it. A few other terminals to receive and send out power, that's about it. So if you remember from the other video, we talked about how pinball machines used to be. They had these giant circuit boards in the back boxes, right? And they kind of controlled a lot of things. Well, now everything is way more modular. So you have one board that's just about receiving, modulating, and driving the power out to the other devices, the power driver board. It only has one job. Then we've got the nano controller, okay? The smaller one here that receives some power. It's got a USB connection here, micro USB, to talk with our computer to receive all the instructions on what to do. And it's got these Ethernet ports, like I mentioned, that's then going to be able to send out the instructions to the other, um, the other, you know, daughter boards, node boards that are later down the line. So you're going to plug in one um, cable to the Ethernet port. You're going to run it out to another board, usually located somewhere underneath your play field, and that's going to have an Ethernet um, receiver. You're going to plug it in there, and then it's got pins and connectors that are going out from there to your actual flippers to your um, slingshot coils, et cetera, right? And powering those on and off. And then if you need have even more devices, right? Because there's a lot of coils, a lot of switches, all that gets controlled through these node boards. You're probably gonna have two or three of those node boards connected on different places of your play field and on the under, underside, right? And they're gonna control certain sections. Like in my online um, tutorial, we go through and talk about how, you know, the first node board um, is gonna have 
um, eight switches or eight, um, eight high power coils it can control and 32 switches. And that's gonna be enough for like your flippers and your slingshots and your trough and uh, for your ball trough. And then all the switches for your, for your lane guides and for your, inside your cabinet for the, um, for the flippers, etc. And that's gonna kind of use it up just kind of like that lower third for one board. But then you're gonna have other things in the middle of your play field, right? In the upper third and wherever else you're gonna need additional no boards. And so again, you'll just have an ethernet cable go from the first one and then from the first one to the second one, second one to the third one. And then from the last one, back down into here to close that loop, okay? And that's kind of basically how they work. Now there's a couple of different options there. I'm going through and using one called the Fast um, Pinball Controller Hardware Setup um, by Aaron Davis. I think he's got a few other people helping him out. Um, it's been great. It's very easy to use. It's working really good. Um, it's very versatile in what it can do. Um, there's probably more than just the two. The other one I know of though is called P-Rock or P3-Rock. And that's used in a lot of commercial games also. Very well proven. A lot of people use that for homebrews. Both are great options. And I'm sorry if there's another option I don't know about. Those are the two I know of. Um, yeah, I chose Fast because um, there's a great Slack community around it that's been very supportive and helpful. And um, he's got a great starter bundle where you get your power supplies, um, a bunch of RGB LEDs all thrown in together, your initial node board, your power supply, nano, like kind of gives you everything you need in a reasonable price just to get a simple machine up and running. And then you can kind of expand and add more boards to it as you need to. So it's been working out great for me. This is my first one though. So what do I know? Um, your mileage may vary. Okay. So that's the um, pinball controller boards. All right, we're done. Well, not quite, but almost. Um, only a couple of the little things left I want to run through really fast. You may have noticed throughout my cabinet, I've, there's these little kind of gray braids, metal braids running through the cabinet, okay? This is your grounding braid. This is really important. You'll notice that pretty much everything metal, these slide rails here, okay? Back in the back box, come up here to the top, down by where the leg brackets are coming in. Everything is pretty much connected to one of these braids. Now I still need to connect it to a couple of spots, but the idea is basically everything metal in your cabinet um, needs to be grounded properly, right? Um, for interference and just for safety and all that. And so you wanna make sure every one of those major pieces of metal throughout your cabinet have a braid running through it to connect it. And then that braid is connected down to the ground, which I've not done yet here in this. You'll see me do that here at a later stage. Um, right now I don't have quite so many things done uh, running. I haven't worried about that, but it's kind of one of the next things we need to do is make sure everything is properly grounded. So that needs to be properly grounded. The other thing I'm gonna talk about, the sloppy wires, all right? They're gonna get better. These are just basic wire steps right now. Just enough to give me the power for what I need for my flipper coils, for my slingshots. Um, a couple wires running for switches to the front, switches to the um, to the flipper buttons, all right? So I can receive those signals. Um, and that's it. Obviously, we're gonna be adding a lot more wires. We're gonna to get to a later stage once we have everything really in its final location. Then we'll be able to go through and run wires at exactly the proper length, color coded correctly, and build our final wiring harnesses that will look nice and slick. That's the hope anyway. Right now, it's just, I'm all about focusing on quick and easy to connect and disconnect. To that point, I'm not soldering any of my connections yet either. Soldering those connections are gonna be the best. We're gonna do that for sure once we get down to a near final build, right? But for now, I'm all about quick connects. So I can just slide things on and off, rearrange things. We're gonna be moving things around. We don't know exactly where that staircase is gonna fit. I don't know exactly where my upper flipper is gonna need to be to hit those shots once I get their final location. We're gonna be iterating very quickly, right? So. I'm all about, I'd rather have, have a less secure connection and deal with that right now, so long as I have the, the versatility to move things around. You know, you do whatever works for you, but that's kind of the approach I'm taking. So far, it's been really nice. Hopefully that gives you all the basics of how to get power into your pinball machine and um, kind of those primary steps around that. Again, I've got tons of links down below for my power switches, for the fuse holders, for everything we did here, right? So you can guys go through and get your own if you want. Um, and then there's that uh, Google Doc that I go through in very, very step-by-step -step detail exactly how to go through and hook all this up correctly, okay? Okay, hope you guys are liking it. If you are, please hit that like button, subscribe, spread the word, let other you know pinhead and crazy people know what we have going on here and hopefully they can follow along. And again, if you haven't done it yet, let's build your own machine, why not? We're going through everything here. Come on, you can do this, it's not hard. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again later, bye-bye.